Good morning and welcome to today the news on Vanguard Life. My name is Damlo Lagunshaki and I'm with my co-host. And this morning we'll be starting our paper review from the front page of Vanguard newspaper. And here we have um, APC, Tinubu, Amechi, Erufai dig in for 2023. All eyes on Bunu's air caretaker committee. How Ushomales mistake all his allies. Tinubu returned to drawing board. Why stakeholders moved against NWC? Amechi's loyalist, Fayemi Erufai moved to straighten party. Uh, details of this can be found on page 5. On page 8, we have a uh, court declines to stop representative from passing infections disease bill. Dismisses may lie a suit. You can see more of this on page 8. And lastly, on the front page of Vanguard on page 13, we have a corporate affairs commission, CSC, this registers Splinter or Anese in Dubu group. Group Talk Stuff wants federal government to address uh, genuine agitation of Igbo. New Awanese says uh, we are intact, disregard fake news. And from the front page of Vanguard, we move straight to the punch. And on the front page of the punch newspaper, we have major headlines. NMA, NUT knocks federal government over order to re reopen schools. Uh, the writers, we can't resume, we don't want to die. Teachers tells federal government and... Uh, Ekiti reopened schools uh, July 20th and worship centers July 17th. You can see more on that story on page 7 of the Punch newspaper. And stories above, we have Akiri Dolu test positive, uh, cabinet members, monarchs self isolate. You can see that story on page 2. And lastly, on the front page of the Punch newspaper, we have a uh, National Assembly discourse ask uh, federal government to subside power consumption. Uh, that story can be found on page 25 and from the front page of uh, the punch we will move straight to the nation on the front page of the nation we have a minister lawmakers clash over plan to recruit 774,000. and uh, on stories above on page four we have a covid 19 the all says um, kogi governor cj didn't die of coronavirus can see more of this on page four and from the front page of the nation we'll move straight to the guardian and on the guardian we have main headlines coronavirus puts flawed electricity tariff hike to test all right as gen coast threatens suit over delay this cause government discourse poor services supply costs uh, senate urges buhari to bear costs of deferred hike operators deny lobbying national assembly and uh, putting sector in debt and stories above, we have uh, rising COVID-19 cases may induce more hardship, uh, federal government wants, and that's all we have on the front page of The Guardian. And that's all we have on the front pages of the papers this morning. I'll be going on a short break now, and where we return, we'll be analyzing uh, the story. My good people of the state, it gives me great pleasure to address you at this moment. I had malaria a few days ago and was treated. I did get over it. And as at the time, we had a party neck. And my colleagues called on me. He, I spoke with one of them who felt that, look, malaria should not be just treated lightly, but that I should go ahead and have a test for COVID-19. The result came out today, 38th June 2020. And I tested positive, but I am asymptomatic. I don't know if I'm not feeling sick, Neither am I feeling hard in any way. But my doctors have decided that I should take the normal treatment and self isolate. I believe that supervised home management will be ideal for me for now. So from now, I will be isolated and go on with the supervised home management. Let me assure our people that, as you can see me, there are many of us like this that don't have the symptom. It is there. You cannot see it. 
and in a few days' time, we'll conduct another test and we'll know the result. Let me assure our people that the work is going on. Um, here at home, attending to files, which is the normal thing I do, and there's nothing that will stop the work going on. And I want to plead with my political associates that they should continue with the project. We are sure to win. As you know, I'm gifted to get through to my destination, knowing that I am a man with special gift. My trust in God to get through this is unshaking. All right, welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Today in the News on Vanguard Live. My name is Damlola Agunshaki, and I've been with my co-host, Precious Chukodi. And uh, we've uh, reviewed uh, the front pages of some of the, the papers, uh, like Vanguard, uh, The Punch Nation, and also The Guardian newspaper. Uh, right now, we are going to analyze uh, the front pages of those papers. And um, of course, uh, We'll be having um, Omiz Ajay, you'll be joining us uh, uh, via uh, live via telephone. He's Vanguard uh, political uh, correspondent, Abuja. Good morning, Omiza. Omiza, can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning, I can hear you now. Okay. Um, some founders and pillars of APC uh, you know, have returned to the trenches to, re uh, to re strategize and plot fresh plans you know, to realize their 2023 political quest. Can you shed more light on this for us? Okay, that some people have returned to the trenches. Yes, to re strategize um, and plot fresh plans to, you know, to realize their 2023 political quest. Of course, that is what is expected of uh, of politicians. They are always returning to the trenches after a major political battle. Uh, what happened in the APC uh, up till last Thursday when the National Working Committee was dissolved was some uh, some sort of war in another form. Uh, so having won and lost the war, permit me to use that phrase, even though according to them they said no victor, no vanquished. But of course as analysts we know that there are victors and there are you know, those that we can say were vanquished. Uh, they have to return to the trenches, especially the ones who lost out in the battle. Okay, so can you uh, they tell have us what you that know about this? You said? Can you tell us what you know about this? What have you been, uh, been following me on it about? Can you tell us more? First of all, you know there is a committee in place, a caretaker committee in place, uh, which in the coming days will be meeting, will, will be embarking on troubleshooting efforts, meeting with those who, you know, uh, the political gladiators who were involved in the battle. Uh, the committee will be meeting with them to see how they can assuage their feelings. But even as at that, there are those who are still hell-bent, not on going to court, but of course, you know, because they have been asked not to go to court, they will definitely devise other means to get back at the party. There are those, for instance, who I won't mention their names, who are just sitting, they've engaged in what uh, the late uh, Atoni Jarabolaige uh, called the uh, Sidon Look attitude. They are just watching because they know that there are some land landmines that have been laid for the, this theatrical committee and whichever national working committee that will be in place after their national convention. So they are just watching and uh, they, you know waiting for when something will happen and they will have the opportunity to lash back at the party. So we have those ones there. Then there are others who are also strategizing. Uh, 2023 is still very far, but for politicians, to them, it is neither here nor there. It's not, it's not, it's not far. So they, they felt that, okay, since they have lost out, what they have to do now is to re-strategize ahead of the planned national convention. First, what, 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 what they are doing is to ensure that the zoning formula remains. That's the zoning formula in the NWC remains. There are those who want it, you know, uh, tinkered with. 
but since this is a mid like a mid uh mid-term national convention because the dissolved national working committee just you know clocked two years uh i think 24 hours before they were dissolved uh, they, they came into being on uh, june 23 24 uh, 2018 and they were dissolved June 25, 2020. So they were just two years in office and it was meant to be a four year tenure. So there are those who want this mid term national convention to tinker with the zoning formula so that, for instance, the national chairman that is supposed to come from the South South will no longer come from the South South. But there are those who are arguing that since it's a mid term national convention, that the zoning formula has to be maintained and that the new national uh, working committee that will come on board will only be completing the tenure of the dissolved uh, national working committee in which case when they come on board they will only be spending two years and not four years okay, you know they will, be, they will just be completing what the other uh, the tenure of the dissolved national working committee okay umiza you know the new um, national working committee they have said that the national chairman will actually go to the south south uh, meanwhile uh, southwest will not accept i say they will not accept uh, the chairmanship slots uh, because uh, its leaders are interested in the uh, in 2020 presidency and um, also in like manner a source said that uh, the north does not seem ready to relinquish uh, power to, uh, to the north in 2023 so can you tell us uh, more on this tell us what you know you see there have been permutations you know around this and like i said what the work of this convention planning committee caretaker extraordinary convention and planning committee is to put in place an nwc by way of conducting you know a national convention from what the apc constitution provides this is not uh, a major national convention like they said, they said extraordinary national convention. By their constitution, this is the time for a mid, mid-term national convention. Now, for mid-term national conventions, what what, what the APC constitution every say is, uh, is that for offices, you know, for vacant offices in the NWC, uh, nominations will be made, and uh, of course they'll be ratified at the mid-term national convention. Now. The NWC as a whole is no longer there. So the Midterm National Convention is supposed to, you know, uh, put in replacements into the national into the National Working Committee. What that means, say so it's going to be a midterm national convention, is that you cannot tinker with the zoning formula. The zoning formula will have to remain as it is. Because the president has not changed, the vice president has not changed, the zoning formula in the National Assembly has not changed, it is still the same dispensation. And so the essence of the midterm national convention will just be to fill in all the vacant offices in the NWC. But like I said, there are those who are still arguing that the zoning formula has to be changed. Now, if you change that, if for instance you say you are going to zone the national chairman to the north, of course, you have the president from the north also. Uh, some people are saying national chairman should be zoned to the northeast, where the senior president also comes from. Uh, the, well, the coming days, will be, it, it depends on how uh, these people are able to marshal their points, uh, of course, with respect to their own uh, constitution. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Jai. Uh, we'll be speaking with Omveza Ajayi, a Vanguard course for senior correspondent from Abuja. Thank you very much. And he has analyzed, you know, he has told us some of the uh, things that we need to know about, uh, you know, the 2023 um, quest for him, the presidency quest in, uh, in the APC. And right now, we'll be yes. connecting, after the break, we'll be connecting with uh, another of our correspondents. Stay with us. My good people of Ondo State, it gives me great pleasure to address you at this moment. I had 
malaria a few days ago and was treated. I did get over it. And as at the time, we had a party neck. And my colleagues called on me. The, I spoke with one of them who felt that the malaria. Welcome back and you're just joining us still today in the news. And uh, there are reports that, uh, you know, the government in this state has tested positive for coronavirus. We will know the video where he was addressing uh, these people. Uh, we have our correspondent here and he's saying us via a phone call. He's a personal dietist. Uh, good morning. Please, uh, he's in Ongo State. And uh, I wanted to actually share with us uh, what do you, what form of information do you have on uh, the government contra uh, contracting COVID? Uh, good, good morning. Uh, the governor yesterday he has tested positive to a coronavirus. He said he had malaria and the doctor uh, advised that he should go for a test. And after the test, it was discovered that it was positive. So he came out to announce himself. And uh, since after that, the atmosphere, in the atmosphere, the commissioners, the uh, police office holders, everybody is uh, expectable here in, in the town. You know, last, last week, the governor met with uh, some traditional leaders who came to uh, endorse him for a second time. So the fear is there that many of those traditional leaders might have contacted the, the disease. Also, some law makers too also sent the governor to Abuja, where he, called, where he took his nomination form for second time in office. So the fear is also there that many, about 20 of the law makers who accompanied him to, to Abuja that have also been affected in Ukraine, rather. So, and the governor did say yesterday when he was uh, broadcasting to the state that uh, everyone that had contact with him the last one week should go for self-examination. So that's where we are now. That's, uh, that's the situation of things now. Yes, here in the land, the SSA, commissioners, the chairman of both of the parasitals who had contact with him the last one week uh, we believe that they too will go for test any moment from now. Thank you. Alright, well, so thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're moving on to other stories. We're going to see something that I guess we'll take that once we come back from the book. My good people of Ondo State, it gives me great pleasure to address you at this moment. I had malaria a few days ago and was treated. I did get over it. And as at the time, we had a party neck. And my colleagues called on me. The, I spoke with one of them who felt that, look, malaria should not be just treated lightly, but that I should go ahead and have a test for COVID-19. The result came out today, 38th June 2020. And I tested positive, but I am asymptomatic. I don't know if I'm not feeling sick, Neither am I feeling hard in any way. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, stay to be in the news on Vanguard Live, and we've been analyzing uh, some of the stories here. And right now, um, we'll be calling one of our correspondents from any good state, and he is uh, Dennis Agbo. Dennis, good morning. Good morning. Oh, 
okay, um, it seems uh, the Corporate um, Affairs Commission has um, withdrawn the re registration of the Splinter Group or Anaise um, in the book, saying it has not fulfilled um, all, re all requirements for registration. I think tell us what you know about this. Okay, I am not certain that uh, the CAC has withdrawn the certificate, but the, yesterday there was a notice uh that indicating that they will uh, withdraw the certificate but be that as it is may the management that signed that notice of uh, withdrawal there are some arguments that um it is the dg of the CAC that is supposed to sign it and a non-management so that uh, it is not yet certain even that notice that appeared yesterday is completely true so, so some investigations are still going on to authenticate the position of uh, the CAC. Okay, uh, but um, the you know according to what you are seeing, it says that the Splinter Group um, president says that uh, the group's uh, major assessment is to ensure that the president of twenty of Nigeria in twenty twenty three should come from uh, Igbo land, and also warned that uh, Igbo might result to self help in handling and uh, insecurities in the area. Uh, due to activities from the killer headsmen. So can you tell us more about this report? You see, uh, whatever is in the group, uh, the new group is giving, uh, is not, for me it is not really justified because there is no crack in our energy to require a splinter group. Uh, 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 what they are saying does, does not exclude the fact that even the uh, energy men or uh, stream of energy led by Chivuni Awundu what I'm talking about the full army headsman, the 2023, this is the same thing the mayor Hanif has been saying that it is time for a new president, for an new uh, man to be the Nigerian president. Uh, the same thing the full army headsman, they have been on the, on the, yeah, in fact, yesterday as a report that uh, came out from Oji River in Enugu State here, that the full army headsman uh, asked a man to death. And he's still under investigation. The commissioner of police has issued the, um, notice a statement to that, that regard that are still investigating. So it is a daily occurrence around the South East, the full and years men menace, and then uh, the new presidency. So really they will have to uh, need they don't just make something to say that they, it is this is the why they are uh, forming the new group. But really there's no crack in our news to warrant a forming of a parallel group. All right, still speaking about the certificate, uh, according to the he was saying that uh, the certificate should be withdrawn because it was illegally registered and should also be proved. What exactly is your take on that one? Sorry, can you come again? I said, speaking about the certificate issued by uh, uh, the was saying that the certificate should be withdrawn because it was illegally yes. registered and should be proved. Yes. Yes, okay. okay. Yes, that is the. Uh, well, really, you know, the. Uh, Ibe Musa, Ibe Buda issued that statement. Really, um, the. The President General is, is uh, not very keen about speaking on this. But he said that if he speaks on it, it will give, be giving credence to these uh, guys. You know that uh, Chooks, uh, uh, his own way, decided that at least uh, there should be a voice from Mohanese. I decided to talk about it. That uh, certificate has been there for a long over one month. We got it. And we, I mean, I've well, been we trying to let your ideas in the book react to it. Yet they refuse to be drawn into trading words with uh, in a group that are uh, masquerading, that which they are not very clear about. So, uh, you took have to say something in order to have a position from uh, their own uh, uh, angle. And um, that is what he did yesterday. Okay, so there's, there's a faction that says that uh, the enemies of the Indigo is what is, what is causing all these cracks in uh, your enemies and leadership. Uh, what's your take on that one? Uh, what is causing the cracks on your enemies? Uh, people are about to have their interests. Maybe for some people, the, it, it could be your enemies is a vegetable platform. For them to use in whatever means they want, uh, however means they want, maybe to uh, to earn some political uh, uh, you know benefits, or uh, for whatever reason they think maybe they are not satisfied with the leadership. It's not everyone that is satisfied with the leadership of uh, Chifuni Yangon, but that does not mean that it is when they get to the you know the, when you get to the you know, the which is a national security in Enugu that you now regulate 
against uh, whatever anger you have against leadership. But not to go in Anambra, in a traditional ruler of the palace, and then you say that you have formed a new Anese. It's not, I mean, it's, it's very laughable. But there are reports that um, Oanese Idibo wants um, federal government to address uh, the new agitations of Igbos. So, can you tell us one? The new agitations, or uh, like what are which agitations are you talking about? The gen said genuine agitations of of Indigo. So we'd like to know more about this because we've been watching this. The new agitation? Are you talking about agitation for Biafra or what? Genuine agitations of federal of Igbo, Yes. Oh, okay. Well. If you are talking about Biafra, I don't know if I can get got it correctly. If you are talking about Biafra agitation, he has been there, it will always be there. But uh, Namdekano is uh, immediately being attacked, uh, he attacked uh, the President General himself. So uh, agitation is there and will continue to be there. Uh, even if you give, uh, if you give uh, the Igbo the President and the President, it will continue to be there. Uh, Biafra is a movement and uh, maybe, I mean, uh, the, some people will not feel satisfied if you give the president and say they get what they call Biafra. So I think it will be there for a long time. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dennis Abo. Um He's a vanguard yeah. correspondent in the state and he has been speaking to us uh, live from via telephone. And okay, um, you know, still talking about, uh, you know, the Splinter Group, they have actually urged, the president has actually urged the members of the public and Indigo to disregard reports that its uh, registration certificates have been withdrawn by the CEC. So, um, I think that's all we have on the paper review for this morning. Um, but of course, uh, before we go, let's just take a look at uh, our Vanguard Sports. And um, on Vanguard Sports, we have... Uh, Igalo makes um, FA Cup uh, quarterfinal best. Um, see, um, CAF uh, postpones um, AFCON to 2022 over COVID-19 fears. Um, of course, and uh, this COVID-19, it's mm. really... And there are even reports that uh, we're just starting to see more of the rising cases. Especially in, in Africa. Yeah, yeah. Especially okay. in Africa. So I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, postponing this is also, you know, they're also looking at uh, the players and of course uh, the people the fans that are going to watch uh, this match and of course um on the um, uh, today's fixtures and epl we have um, that's a premier league arsenal will be home to norwich and everything will be home to leicester city and west ham will be home to chelsea and um, of course uh, that is all we have on vanda live sports and of course uh, before we go let's take a look at uh, mr and mrs what let's see what they are saying uh, mr is saying um, Yes, you told me about the increase in the price of foodstuffs, but why did you serve this meal with a piece of meat? And Mrs. replied, she didn't do anything about it. That's a warning strike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These people, they always have one or two things. But something. you telling him that you did not do anything about it, you know, the increase in foodstuffs and all that thing. What do you exactly want him to do? Because well, looking at they are cutting now, salaries and people exactly. do not have monies anymore. Obviously, the budget that took to be divided. It will be divided. I think that that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, as much as we might just look at it from the angle of the budget that took be divided, your stomach will never ever it will tell you to it. stop eating. But you, the only thing is that your stomach also needs to get used to it. So that is what Mrs. <laughs> is telling. That's what Mrs. is also telling me, that. No, it's a warning strike. You need to do something about it. But I can't I really blame you when it comes to this. And that's all we have on the, today's uh, um, paper review and analysis. And don't forget that uh, you can always uh, follow us on our social media platforms that are showing on your screen or uh, get the reduced uh, the things that we're reporting here on Vanguard Live on our website. And that's uh, www.vanguardngr.com. Uh, don't forget to always stay safe, stay, stay smart, protect yourself, and also protect others. It's bye from us on this show.